This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. In news from the crime beat, another two armed robberies under investigation here in the Capitol. Police say in the first, two gunmen entered a home on West Street off Meeting Street before 10 a.m. Tuesday morning and robbed a couple of cash. But before leaving, the gun-toting culprits physically assaulted the male. EMS treated the man on the scene, and after 10 p.m. that same day, two gunmen pulled up to a home in Sandilands Village, rode west off of Wind Street, and shot a man in the upper thigh before robbing him of a blue Nissan Bluebird, license plate number AS0731. The injured man has since been treated and discharged. Meantime, the hunt continues for the suspects. Outdoor toilets or pit latrines in some cases has been seen as a issue for decades. So much so that Centerville MP Reese Chipman last year sought to bring an end to its use. Fast forward to this year and Mr. Chipman says the situation has turned out a little different than he anticipated. But when you do go around the neighborhood, you realize that the pit latrines where people were actually using um, a hole as a toilet as it was way back then, people do not do that anymore. Now you have toilets on the outside where there is some form of plumbing um, and in those cases you know they you know you pretty much just have to um, we, we, you know when we looked at that we're just looking at whether there was adequate plumbing or not. In fact, Mr. Chipman says he's given his constituents the option of removing these facilities. That said, he adds that he's recognized there was a significant difference between outdoor toilets and pit latrines, adding that when he first spoke of the removal process, he was actually referring to the latter, which is essentially a dumping hole with no proper plumbing. And of course, as time went on, those would be, there would be environmental concerns if that's what people were doing you know, where feces was in these pits. But, and, and those were what was being politicized as an outdoor toilet. So it made people believe that outdoor toilets, I mean, houses in, in, in various areas would, can have a, a toilet or a bathhouse outside. I mean, they just have to have adequate plumbing. But the way it came across was as if there were these outdoor toilets with no plumbing or facilities and people were actually just dumping in the hole somewhere. Whereas that used to be the case. But now in Canada, which I mentioned in the House of Parliament, um, we don't have that where people are dumping in a, in a hole. Like he says educating the masses on the difference between the two is extremely important considering the politicization of the longstanding issue. Most of the places in Sanaville, if the toilet is on the outside, they have plumbing facilities, you know, but there are cases where, like I said, pit latrines would have existed. And in those cases, we would ask residents or landlords if they would like us to remove them, if they're not using them for something that's environmentally safe, you know? So that's really the issue. I think it's more of an education process to identify there are two different types of one is an outhouse that covers a pit latrine, and the other is an outdoor toilet that has actual plumbing facilities. But we have been actively working on the program in terms of identification, and then, of course, removal in the cases where people would want you to just remove the outhouse. New and returning students to the University of the Bahamas head to classrooms under a new policy, and that's all Bahamians study free of charge. Orientation and registration kicked off this morning with hundreds of new students returning out of the Keva M. Bethel building. Welcoming the newbies, UB President Dr. Rodney Smith says the students have no choice but to succeed considering the 100% free tuition. Now, this free education requires students to maintain a 2.0 GPA. Some say this is the bare minimum. However, student government leaders Alexis Lightborn and Brittany Darling say otherwise. Um, we do understand the direction in which the government is taking with the grant, um, that actual scholarship. We want everybody to get 
a college education. Everybody wants to be afforded that chance. Now, everybody doesn't always meet that certain criteria. Now, it's very important that we do keep in mind our minimum GPA at three point, but at the end of the day, we want to broaden that horizon and give more opportunities to kids that really do want to come to school. These students say they're grateful for the opportunity afforded. Like Alexa said, yes, we do want to uphold the academic standard, but at the same time, we would also want to want everybody to be afforded the same opportunity to having a free education. And although there may be some who may begin the university and may feel complacent or may feel out of place, we would hope that the university experience would help them to gain some exposure and make them well-rounded in the future. I think it's actually a really good thing and the right step for the government because it's allowing more Bahamians to actually get the right education at the next level they need to perform in whatever uh, studies they want to perform in and make the next step in uh, life after college. I think it opens up opportunities to the family islands to come and get a college experience and I think it's really great. It allows us to meet each other, have a whole community, get to know one another. UB anticipates some 1,600 first-time students for the upcoming semester. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.